Tonal Balance Control is an analysis tool that visualizes your audio against a reference target, helping you achieve balance and clarity in your projects. This means you can compare your work with track references and genre standards informed by analysis on years of popular masters. For example, if I change the target from bass heavy to modern, you can see these green overlays shifting. These overlays represent the typical ranges of energy for the reference target. We go from low, low mid, high mid to high. The white lines represent where your mix or master stacks up, but you don't have to use the reference targets that Isotope came up with. For example, you can import your own tracks or a whole folder of songs that you love to create your own targets by going over here and choosing either target curve from audio file or a folder of audio files. You can switch from broad to fine view. This gives you a bit more information over here. Also, we've included the crest factor icon. So if the circle here is too far to the right, this indicates that your low end is lacking in dynamics. If it's too far to the left, this suggests that your track's low end could benefit from more compression to frame the energy in that region. Maybe the best thing about Tonal Balance Control is its ability to remotely control any instance of Ozone 8 or Neutron 2's equalizer and fine tune all the adjustments right from the Tonal Balance Control plugin. I'll show you what I mean now. First of all, I should point out that I have Tonal Balance Control inserted as the final plugin on my master bus. This is where yours is going to need to be too. Also, I'm going to stick with the bass heavy target over here. I feel like that's what this track is. Very bass heavy, trappy, but also electronic. Let's first have a listen to this track and see what tonal balance control is telling us about its distribution of energy. I'm noticing a few things. The first is that the upper mids sound a little harsh. My suspicion is that the hi-hats are pretty active in that region. But to be sure, I can use Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and click to hear what's happening in that area of the frequency spectrum. I'll do that now. It's definitely the hi-hats. So to solve this problem, I don't have to go to the hi-hat track. I can do everything from tonal balance control. So right now I have a neutron on the hi-hat track, so all I have to do is call up my hi-hats neutron from this drop-down menu right here. And now I can make moves to reduce the harshness from the hi-hat from the neutron EQ without ever leaving tonal balance control. So I'm going to do that now. I'm looking at where the energy is sort of moving around here in the spectrum. I'm noticing that it's active over here, which is where I'm going to set one node. And I'll turn this node into a dynamic node. So it's going to very transparently push down energy when it gets too active in that region. I'll do the same for node number five here because a little bit of information over here that's poking out. I'll narrow the cue and make this one dynamic as well. Next, because this is a high frequency instrument, all the important information is in the upper frequencies right here. So I'm going to make a high pass cut. I'm going to go over here and right click and choose a much deeper filter, 48 dB octave right there, and just scoop out all that unnecessary low end. This will help the real low end elements like the bass and the kick stand out a little bit more. That's sounding much, much better to me. But now I feel like the bass elements just aren't powerful enough for this bass heavy mix. I can also see in the tonal balance control visualizer that the low end is lacking a little bit in energy. So I'm gonna make a mastering move. On the hi-hats I did a mixing move, this time we're gonna move to a mastering move by talking to my Ozone 8 plugin right from tonal balance control. So I'm gonna bring up all the low end energy with uh, one node. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna go over to Ozone 8 flip this menu up and now if you see in tonal balance control that line is going a little bit south of the center of that green overlay have a look so I'm gonna make a decision to just boost this area right here I 
can bypass the EQ to hear what it sounded like before I made this move by pressing this bypass button while the mix plays. Great, so now our crest factor is in control. This white line is right where we need it to be, in the center of the typical low end frequency range from zero to 250 hertz. And we made a mixing move and a mastering move in just a few minutes without ever leaving tonal balance control. And just to show you how the changes that I made in tonal balance control are reflected in the neutrons and ozones that I'm controlling, I'm gonna call it the hi-hats neutron over here. So you can see the EQ moves that I made. There they are right there. Those are our two dynamic nodes. And now I'll call up the ozone, which is right before my tonal balance control plugin on my master bus. And we can see there's that big EQ boost here at node number two, which brought up our low end and I think contributed to a more totally balanced mix and definitely more defined low end. So by adapting your track's energy to a desired genre target, in our case, bass heavy, you're going to ensure that your track is more totally balanced, which is often the deciding factor when making sure that a mix translates really well across popular distribution channels. This means that anyone listening to your mix is going to get a consistent experience, whether they're listening to your track on their phone, in their car, or in a club.